What's up YouTube? Got another tank replay and um, I'm really proud of this one. This was a good game. Um, so I've been grinding a lot of my credit earners lately just so I can buy a lot of tanks that I have unlocked and I want to show you why this tank, the FCM 50 t is one of my favorite credit earners in the game and why I believe it's one of the best premium tanks for earning credits in the game. Um, the teams are pretty evenly matched in terms of player skill. We have a slight advantage and I'm top tier. Obviously very good conditions for having a good game, so I try to make the most of it, and this tank is a pretty solid tank. It's a pretty good all-rounder. It's got good view range, as you're about to see here. Bam, there you go. Just spotted like six enemy targets. Um, it has a really good gun, good speed, serviceable armor. Um, a lot of people will say like this tank's made of paper. I don't really agree with that. I kind of played it with that assumption when I first got it and took a lot of unnecessary hits just assuming that, you know, it would not it would go through my armor regardless of what I did. And once you figure out the armor layout of this tank, it actually doesn't have the worst armor and you can use it to some degree fairly well. Like the front of the turret isn't great, but the mantlet will block most shots and it has a pretty decent mantlet and the upper plate isn't bad if you angle it right, and it's got some good tracks and decent side armor for side scraping, so all in all, it's not the worst armored tank considering the speed and other stuff, and it has pretty good gun depression too. Obviously not quite as good as the T29, and as it is becoming customary now, I have a bad start and I take a hit and lose my gunner and lose my medical kit right away. And um, see that? that I took a shot from uh, the Jackson, and didn't didn't take any damage there just because of my gun mallet and this uh that's typical is6 right there just bounced off his ass that low or love uh, or however you pronounce that um he gets himself killed because he gets singled out he just yellows and that t29 has welcome to hell written on his turret and he's the one that's gonna be in hell soon yeah this is clever anyways um I take a big ass hit from that IS-6. He's um, and I think he's coming this way, so I decided to get the hell out of there. And um, this is what I'm talking about. I've talked about this in other videos. I think having good reverse speed is very important in tank because it lets you get out of hairy situations pretty quickly. And I probably should have just reversed back over this hill, but I mean, I figured I had time. It's an IS-6. It's not the fastest tank in the world, and he is coming up the hill, but now he's. Um, getting sidetracked by other enemies so I decided to go somewhere else and this is one of the strengths of this tank um, it can just pop up unexpectedly in other places and this is what I feel you like you should do you should find a spot that's good um, and just keep doing damage and then once the enemies are on to you and they're all waiting for you to pop back up again pop up somewhere else because this tank is fast enough to do that, and um, they're not going to expect it, and you're going to do lots of damage. And I'm having an okay game so far, 1600 damage. Um, I've lost almost half my HP though, so it's not a great game. Here's what I feel like this tank is really good at, and how to make the best use of the armor. If you're, you can go sort of hold down and just poke ridge lines like this, and the snapshot. Check this out. Perfect snapshot right there on the t s Cupola. The snapshot accuracy and the shooting on the move accuracy is really good at this tank. I read on the wiki that it actually has some kind of um, hidden stat for good snapshot accuracy. It's probably like good dispersion values or something like that. Anyways, whatever. I've definitely noticed it to be the case. And um, because this tank has a metric buttload of ammo, you don't really have to worry about missing shots, and because they're cheap, you don't really have to worry about missing shots. You can just poke and take a snapshot, and if it hits, great. If it doesn't hit, whatever. I mean, you can do it again in six seconds, and that one's probably going to hit. And This tank's got a good aim time and really good penetration with its standard ammo, so you don't even have to worry about that much. And check this out. I've been firing APCR at this KV-4, but... I decided to shoot AP there just because I figured he's almost dead and I figured I could probably get through it with this good accuracy and I try to hit his um his machine gun port there but it doesn't work. 
And I really wish I just kept my APCR loaded and kill secured here, because, I mean, I'm going to make money anyway, and that would have been a Radley Walters, and I decide to do that, but someone gets him at the last minute. So I switch back to AP, and I notice we're starting to lose here, and I notice all those tanks on the other flank, the 9 and 0 line, are almost in our base. So in these situations, what you need to do is sing a lot enemy targets and just execute them like that. You want to sing a lot enemy targets um, that are and just aggressively take them out because then you can relocate and then you'll have some breathing room to fight the enemies and the less guns you have firing back at you the better. And so I decided to go back to the base. I see that E25, I get a little sidetracked. Honestly, I didn't think I would even, and check out this, this awesome on the move accuracy. I didn't really think I'd make it to reset, so I figured I'll just farm some damage, but then I figured, you know what, I'm pretty close, might as well try. And that WC-111 does everyone a favor, and he gets in there, and check this out. Almost zero seconds on the clock, and I just barely managed to reset. Obviously, when you're resetting, um... Spread out your damage, don't keep hitting the same tank over and over because they accumulate their capture points, so you want to hit all the tanks in the cap circle. And here's what I'm talking about with the armor earlier. There's a T20 across the hill there that's taking shots at me, and I just took two bounces from him. And I wasn't even angled all that well. So, he's still firing at me, and I decided that now that I have some breathing room, I'm going to relocate and get to a better, more advantageous position. And Check this out, I'm just auto-aiming and snapshotting, and I load APCR for this T69 because that's kind of a bouncy tank, like it can troll you with its armor. And this is what I'm, the kind of shot I'm giving him, I'm just giving him almost a completely hull down shot and he can't do damage to me, I blocked a shot from him as well and I think he's out of ammo now because he seems to be running and I finish him off, switch back to AP. And here's another thing this tank is really good at, and it's really fun, and you can probably tell by the way I'm backing up on this hill here. I'm going to ram the crap out of that chaffee, and I have full controlled collision on this tank. It's very good at ramming. It's fast, it's got a lot of frontal armor, and it's heavy. It's something like 55 tons, and that's what I'm talking about right there. Just killed that chaffee. He didn't know what hit him. Well, he did, but it was too late. And that's the end of the game. Um, seven kills, and finally that T20 managed to penetrate me with APCR, but whatever. So anyway, seven kills, um, 6,000 damage, 1,800 base XP. Not sure why I didn't get a Defender Medal. I guess I didn't reduce enough capture points, I, but I could have... I don't know, I really thought I would have gotten a Defender Medal there. But yeah, this tank's armor is not bad. As you can see, I actually... Um, I actually blocked more shots than I took, and one of those shots was APCR, so, it, like, I mean, that was probably bound to go through either way, but, yeah, it's n not a bad tank, well, it's not even not a bad tank, it's just a good tank overall, and I really like it, and, um, I'm gonna show you how much money I made on this game, and I think you'll see, I'll explain why I think it's one of the best premium credit earners. Anyways, alright, let's look at the results. Alright, here's the end results, and um, where is it? Obviously Ace Tanker, duh, just kidding, doing my Fosh impression. I don't know, I used to really like Fosh, but he's been kind of douchey now, so I unsubscribed. I don't know, maybe it's just my impression or something, but he seems like really pissed off lately at just like Russian tanks and life in general, I don't know. Anyways, that's not what this is about. So, look at that credit earning. 152,000 credits. And granted, I had a premium account there. But still, I would have made almost 102,000 credits without a premium account. And I definitely would have turned a profit, as you'll see later on. But obviously, Ace Tanker, um, Top Gun, High Caliber, almost a Radley Walters with that KV-4. But uh, I didn't I didn't pull it off. Should have just kept that APCR loaded. Um, whatever. Hindsight's 2020. You can't always predict these things and it was still a pretty good game so if you, as you can see by all these tanks on the right hand side here like I just shot everything um, I'm surprised I didn't get a confederate medal 
Anyways, next screen, obviously top on damage earn, top on XP, top on kills for both teams, 1800 base XP. Really good game in my opinion, I was really proud of this one. Um, let's look at the next screen. Nothing too surprising here, a lot of direct damage, 31 direct hits, 26 penetrations, 33 shots. This tank is accurate and it's got reliable DPM, like it's got a pretty reliable gun. Um, most of that was from closer than 300 meters, so it was it's a pr fairly small map and like those are pretty close range engagements, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Here's what I really want to show you. Check out those credit earnings. Um, even with those four APCR rounds that I fired, I still made something like 120,000 credits on that seven something, seven minute, 30 second game. And um, this tank is really great for earning credits and I'm gonna tell you why. And I really wanna do an in-depth review later of this tank because I feel like this game doesn't really cover everything that it's good for. But in, in a nutshell, the reason this tank is really good at making credits is for three reasons. One, it has premium matchmaking, so it only sees tier 9 tanks, well up to tier 9 tanks. So it's not going to see tier 10s, therefore it's not going to see like really heavy armor. I mean, you're going to get the STIs, and, or ST1 I think it is, and the E75s, but you're not going to get like IS7s and stuff like that. So you're going to be able to penetrate most of the targets you shoot with this tank. The second reason is the gun has reliable DPM, and what I mean when I say reliable DPM is it's not just good DPM on paper, like for example the SU-122 or any of the Russian tanks, well not any, but a lot of them that have those big 122mm guns, like yeah on paper it's got more DPM than an STB-1 or something like that, but it doesn't have that much penetration, it doesn't have the best accuracy, it doesn't have the best aim time, so you're going to be missing and bouncing a lot of those shots, and that paper DPM isn't going to translate to the battlefield. With this tank, it does in fact translate to the battlefield, because you have good snapshot accuracy, good firing on the move accuracy, good aim time, um, very good penetration, even with the standard ammo. And really good APCR as well that's not too expensive. Well, I mean, I guess it's standard prices. But... So those are... Did I make... Was that two reasons or three? I think that's two reasons. Fuck, I can't count. Anyways, and another reason why this tank is really good at making credits is... um. Well, there's actually four reasons. Sorry, I, I need to keep track of all my stuff. Anyways... The ammo costs are really cheap, as you can see there, 255 per shell. You can fire a lot of shells with this tank and do a lot of damage, and it's not going to cost you that much money. And the last reason is, this tank is really good for ramming. The tank itself is almost as deadly of a weapon as the gun that's mounted on it, just because it's got 120mm of frontal armor, and it's pretty darn fast. You can get up to like 70 down a steep hill, and... It weighs something like 55 tons, I want to say. So, basically, in a nutshell, the reason this tank is good is making money is because it can do a lot of damage, it has premium matchmaking, and it's cheap to repair and resupply. So you make a lot of money, and you don't spend a lot of money keeping it up and running. And this is why this is one of my favorite tier 8 credit earners in the game. And, um, if you guys are even remotely interested in any of the um, French heavy tanks, I would definitely recommend this tank, especially because, you know, Wargaming is getting rid of all the premium matchmaking tanks, so it might pay to grab it while it's still on sale, because it's definitely a good tank, and you might wish you had if it, uh, you know, when they remove it. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next one.